Two things that have really stuck out for me since we've been using this is the visuals. You know, how many guys have put it down and gone, cool, that looks great. So you've got your visual box ticked and your ball speed box ticked. And that's two huge, huge hurdles that, that in the past we haven't had. You know, we, we, we sometimes have got one, not the other, but we've never had them both align where you've got guys going, cool, you know, that looks great. You know, so that's where, that's where I've noticed a big, 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 big uh, shift is we've got guys, we had guys in Valderrama come along that we, we'd not really spoken to and done no work with, but they're coming to us and saying, I've played with uh, Jorge, <laughs> played with Jorge and, and tried his driver, what can we do? And all of a sudden, you know, you're going, right, we've had that with irons for years and years, but with woods, you know, we've been, we've been trying to persuade guys to play the wood. Now they're going to try to persuade us to give them their wood, you know, and what, what a nice problem to have. Yeah, that felt better. It depends what you're looking for, whether you are looking for the straightest, straightest driver or the longest, because the two don't tend to go hand in hand. I would say we're fairly similar. I think Matt's probably got me on a good one. Yeah. yeah. He's got nine years on there. <laughs> Merely a young Yoda. Especially straight up. Yeah. Yeah, and see again that my my numbers I think with driver aren't actually massively efficient because I'm fairly lucky in that I've got quite good speed, so I'm quite happy with hitting it 300 yards. That's that is good with me. You know, the spin rate is a little bit up, but I feel like I can control that a little bit more. So, you know, when when we're discussing good and bad drivers, I think if you know if you know your tendency and you work towards that, then you've got half a chance. You know, I think if you if you go chasing distance, yes, I could probably hit it further. But then I'm going to hit it further offline. <laughs> you, you know, you've got enough distance there to be playable. It's about hitting fairways. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of this. This this driver head, certainly when you're looking at strike wise, much much more forgiving. You know, I've I mean I've really tested the face. I, I've hit some, <laughs> I've hit some low heel high toe. Well, I'm trying to hit it a little bit more up here, but my bad one tends to be low heel. So that's where that really spinny kind of why, fading why, why shot. Uh, well, that is kind of centre. You know, your, your high toe, your, your centre to high toe is your most active spot on the face. So, you know, if you can, if you're maxing that out, and I'm trying to hit draws. So, if you're trying to get, if you're, if you're, if you're missing the face that side, you're going to get more tail. If you're missing it left, you're going to get the other one, which is, for me, I'm looking at it and going, oh, nightmares. Saved that one, but again, that's where the forgiveness comes in because I felt like I mean that was just it could have gone anywhere, but 285. I'd probably be on the short stuff there, I think. <laughs> so beauty, I think, of the G over the over the 190 for me is it's, it's adjustable. You know, you've got your moving. So with irons, I'm, I, I would class myself as a quite a decent ball striker, but drivers I tend to use quite a lot of the face. So. If I, can, if I can get a little bit more weight where I need it to, that, that helps massively in my shot shapes and my and consistency. You know, so this one, in terms of spin rates and in terms of offline weight and heel, weight and toe, that's much more I can dial it in. So I'm just more happy with this head because I know in my mind that I've got it set to do one thing and it just takes another thing out of my mind that I don't need to worry about. So if I know the weights are set where it is and on a good swing it's going to do that, then I can delete that from my mind and it's another thing I don't need to worry about. So I've got one, I've got low heel, and then we've got one back in the toe because again, all by, if I, if I strike it properly, my miss is left. So if I can get something that's gonna launch it a little higher and get it, get it a little bit more fade bias, again, it, I, I do find sometimes it does get a little bit high and spinny, but I don't mind that, you know, I can, I can deal with it and hopefully, hopefully more often than not it does as it's told. Worth better because we can put the weights forward and not the spin down. So some minutes like Keith Mitchell in the US, 
hitting up on the ball, the S2 is better because it's, I mean, forgiveness is very similar, but he doesn't need to not spin down as much because he hits it on the up. I did, I walked a few with, uh, with Jorge and Valderrama, actually played nine holes with, with Jorge and Valderrama. Um, we tried it with his, with his current driver he's got in at the moment. And it's funny with, with Jorge, he's, he's instant, even with irons, and we did some instant with, with stuff with irons, it was, you could tell within three swings whether he liked it or didn't like it. And he's very feely, his golf swing is quite feely. You know, in terms of ball strike, he's probably one of the best out there. But, you know, you look at his golf swing from afar and you think, oh, that's, uh, you know, it's not as, it's not as, pretty looking as some other guys but it's very very efficient so you know he knows straight away three swings down the line that's in that's not and it was funny we were actually we were on the range at Valderrama it's quite a short range so you can't really hit too many drivers which was perfect for away because he's t one up clicked it his caddy turned to me after after three swings he said thumbs up he said yeah we like it and we thought yeah that's that's positive straight away so then we took that to the course um Tried both heads actually, we took both heads out on the course and then tweaked a couple of different things. Ended up with the G as well. Um, both weights, uh, centre and forward is in terms of its most forgiving, lowest spinning setting. Um, and, and he bombed it, yeah, he hit it great. He hit it really, really good. Um, same shaft that he had, so it's kind of a, a straight swap. You know, it's, I say swap, a uh, carbon copy of what he's already got. So in terms of feel, it was good, but... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it's like for like. Yeah, and then and and Valderrama again is quite a tough, quite a a picky golf course. It's not necessarily a big drivers golf course, but he hit some drivers where he wouldn't normally, and was he almost surprised himself in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, yeah, in a good way. So you know that was that was positive straight out of the gate. But for, I mean, the the one thing that we've we've noticed with everyone that's 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 tried it and, and noticed it is he put it down, and it looks good. You know, visually it looks great. You know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look um, alien. It doesn't look like it's too different to, you know, what a lot of people are looking at and going, yeah, that's turning me on. You know, that's a really, really good looking driver. So looks are, <laughs> everyone, everyone's the same. You know, whether you're at retail, or whether you're out on tour, looks are everything. You know, if you put it down behind the ball and you go, oh, I don't know about that. You know, driver being the hardest club in the bag to hit, if you've got those thoughts in your head and you're sitting there over the ball and you haven't made a swing yet, then you're up against it, you know. So, looks were everything, and then and then performance, you know, speed off the face and, and where the ball's going. And we've certainly been on to a winner, haven't we? We've noticed a lot of lot of good stuff. Well, one huge, huge thing that we will stand out straight away down at the ball. I think you got the colour right. You know, I think I think the the, the more neutral black. It, it, it appeals to so many more people. You know, blue. The blue was a real classy look, and it was a great looking head. But wasn't it? yeah. How many guys put it down, especially when we're out on tour and we're out in the range, how many guys put it down and went, it's blue, you know? So that's a huge, huge thing. Did you, but did you actually have that then? Yeah. yeah, 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 a lot, yeah. Which I can, I, can, I can understand I can't because coming back to what we've just said, you know, looks and visuals are everything. So if you don't like it to start with, you're up against it. But not being a, a hugely driver known brand, it just added another hurdle that people didn't want to jump over. You know, and now coming back to what we we're saying about the two most important things, visuals and ball speed, the rest we can kind of tinker and work out. We just didn't have the visuals right. So that's, not, that's aside from performance, that's aside from what's happening on the range when we've got guys hitting it. That it purely and simply is just people going, don't like it. And sometimes that's half the battle, isn't it? Um, so yeah, colour aside, colour aside, we've, 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 it's not a... Um, it, uh, well, I suppose it is really, isn't it? It is a complete overhaul. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not, it's not hugely dissimilar, but it is. Um, you know, from the, from the GT 180 into the 190G, you've still got your movable weights, but done in a much more um, refined and slimmed down way because the G now is as much movable weights as we need. You know, we haven't added anything just for the sake of adding things. You know, there's no, there's no gimmicks on there. It purely and simply is your two sliders, one in the heel, one in the toe, that's going to look after your ball flight. We struggled with the, with the 180, um, GT180 on, on tour, didn't we? Because it, I mean, for the guys that really deliver some club head speed, it did spin up a touch. Yeah. And as soon as you put a centre track in the middle of the driver, you've got that much scaffolding in the bottom to hold that weight track in place that you've moved so much weight down there, you're always fighting the, the, the fight to get spin down. There's only so much you can do. So by taking that out, moving the tracks to the side and having 
more weight in the wave salt further forward, just being able to, you know, really knock that spin down and get it to, you know, certainly where we need it. Mm. And then, you know, it, it's easier to add spin from a low point for, you know, the majority of the golfers to then to go from the other end from a spinnier driver to get that knock mm. spin down and get that performing for the top top guys. It, it, it's almost impossible, but if you do it the other way around from low spin up, you've got you've got more of a chance. Yeah, you can you, you can tailor that through shaft. You can you can look after that in 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 far far easier ways than you can shaving it off. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to sound really stupid, right? But this is again, and it, there's no right or wrong answer to this. So it is just purely personal. But where you've got the uh, the black finish fading into into the the rear of the crown here, for me when I've got that behind the ball, it looks soft. It looks like it's got a lot of energy. Yeah, you know, again, that's a really stupid thing to say from a block color. But if that crown was all black, I would see that as quite hard. So, you know, when you've got that behind a ball, you feel, I, I certainly, my eyes instantly go to the black strip that is, that is constant black, and it kind of fades. So when you're looking at, a, you know, we always look at whether you look at score lines or whether you look at the top line, but for me, it feels like there's a real, a real solid block here where it's that solid black, and where it fades, I, it, I almost lose that in my eye. So I feel really like I can get a, a center line from where that black, that black strip is. Totally bonkers, and that's purely just my personal look. But when I've got that down at a dress, the, the back edge for me is lost, and then I just see the, the leading edge in the front, which that's what hits the golf ball, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be doing, to, I don't think it would go very far if we got off the back. <laughs> oh, no. So again, I'm, I'm not a huge um, distance warrior. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking to, Hit it 360. I, I hit it quite far. I hit it quite long. You know, my, my average would probably be about 300, 310. You know, which for me, around any golf courses, I can, you can play golf from. So you know, that's what I'm more more cautious about is is finding something that is easy to hit but is efficient at the same time. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not looking to max it out and get it coming out at you know. 1500 knuckleball spin that's going to really run 100 yards and get out there you know something that's soft and playable is where i want to be i mean that one there look i've missed that i mean i i, I slightly open face and it's a little bit of a weaker ball flight but it's playable but it's 300 yards you know so if i've if i've missed that there so yeah fairway first cut but 300 yards down there happy days so if that's if that's my bad one which i try and i try and feel like it is and that's where i've got the weight set up for it i try and if I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna miss it that way. Happy days, you know, I'm all for that. So. Nice. That's the flight I like. See, I, see, Alex and I always argue, we always have this discussion is, Alex wants to hit it lower. <laughs> and I like the ball flight that that was. Yeah, that was too high for you, right? No, that was probably the highest I'd like to see. You know, again, this is the difference between Alex and I in terms of efficiency. So Alex is head speed there at 112, ball speed 166, but he's six yards behind me. You know, the, 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 the head speed and the ball speed should suggest that I'd be way past. But where I'm a little bit inefficient in what I do, my, I'm only maxing out at 300, 305. Whereas that last one there, 295, that's very good. And regardless of you know what the marketing grant for says, there'll always be someone that stands that on its head. You know, because everyone's different, everyone delivers it slightly differently, and everyone's got their own action, so it's always going to perform slightly differently. We had um, R and D over Wentworth Week, and we were hitting the drivers then, um, and then we got I think they arrived August, July, August, just after the Open. So we had them on the truck, we, we were testing them in here, and I mean, you know, like a couple of big kids, but you're in here and you, you run down, we run down with a really excited face. Yeah. And one in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck. See, that's flat. Very good. Mate, it made, made me look like an absolute amateur. So again, 112, 112 head speed, 160 ball speed. Come on. You know, again, that was a little, 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 a little high in the spin rates, but it's it's getting there in a much more efficient way. So, you know, a lot more shots to warm up. <laughs> like a Bentley. 
<laughs> oh, cool, now that's that. You won't drop, leave that one down. Head speed up a little bit as well. Again, 296. So a lot of a lot of positives from different ball flyers. Had a look. Um, the, the, the use of composite, I think, was a, was a big thing. Um, head shape as well is a, is a massive thing. I mean, uh, personally, I felt you know I, I looked at that and I think yeah, that I really like that. Um, you know, previously, personally, I was playing a, 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 an MP driver that we had from Japan, and that was very bumpy, very old school looking. Um, not, a, not a popular shape now. A very aesthetically pleasing shape on the crown. It's slightly higher here. It's higher than the, G, than the GT before was. Um, me personally, I felt the ST is a little wide, um, sort of back and heel. So this, I mean, proportionally, I just think behind the ball, it looks right. It frames it well. Um, cosmetically, it's right, you know, it's very classy with the, with this, the chrome rumbird bug and just a little bit of detail on the back. It just looks at the complete package and as we said earlier, you know, you, when you hit it, the ball speaks there, it performs, it sounds right. So, I've got the jig. Um, what would it say? And the reason you've chosen G over non G? Um, Performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... When we did the R&D testing, I went out on the course with the SP because I preferred that at the time. And then, you know, we've done testing, as we said, you know, I'm also negative on it. 2.4, so means with the G, I've got the ability to knock the spin down. Um, I mean, at address-wise, I think, visually for me, the, the, S is a, the ST is a little, a little higher in the crowd at the front. It's interesting because uh, Valderrama with Jorge, he with gave him both both in his spec, and on the range he preferred ST, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, First yeah. First three hits, he was like, yeah, that's good. And then actually, after walking nine holes and you tweaking with him, he ended up in the gym. And the first time we've had a wood that I'm confident 100% to be able to go up to a player and go. Yeah. Oh, you gave that bet, didn't you? I did try and hit that one, oh, yeah. 78 mile that ball speed. <laughs> I'm going to retire on that one, I'm putting mine down.